Hello YouTube, this is the old school hair pressing tutorial. I'm showing you the Apex Pressing Oil Water Repellent. This is one that I prefer to use when pressing hair. You also have the option of using this, which is Dax Pressing Oil, and it has coconut oil and castor oil in it. And it is a good pressing oil, I just prefer the Apex. I like the way it makes the hair feel. Um, both of these are optional. All right, I'm going to show you. I'm using a flat tail. I'm sorry, flat tail. <laughs> a rat tail comb. I will be using this to divide the hair and to uh, comb it through before I use the pressing comb. Also, I use these clips to help separate and hold the hair. Both kinds do come in handy. Here's a smaller pressing comb. I, I prefer using this one on the girl's hair. It helps me uh, manage my sections very well. Uh, the Marcel curlers. And I also have this larger pressing comb, which I don't like it very much. It has a curve in it, as you can see. It's a little bit more cumbersome to use. So I don't usually use it, but I do have it there just in case. I, the eye is on, I think, about 9 at this point, and I did turn it down to about 8. The hotter it is, of course, the straighter the hair, but I don't want to burn the hair straight. The towel that I'm showing you, I usually lay that there, and I pour water on it, so that's usually wet. So in the event that my comb gets too hot, I lay it on that towel to cool it down. The napkins I will use to help hold the, the hair as I pull the comb through and I also will use it to test to see if my comb is too hot. Using a white paper towel lets you know the way that you test to see if your comb is too hot. You lay the comb on the paper or you squeeze it with the paper and if the paper turns brown which is pretty much you're burning the paper lets you know that that comb is too hot to put in the hair. Um, so th I use that as a twofold and um, sometimes I'll hold it or I'll lay it on top of the stove and what we're going to do right now before we start sectioning we're going to do her kitchen area which is the nap of her neck or I should say the nap of her neck a lot of people don't aren't familiar with the term kitchen <laughs> um, trying to adjust the camera here I apologize um, I'm using the laptop and sitting on a chair so I'm putting the oil on her, uh, on the nap of her hair, on the nap of her neck, and just to get her edges first. And I'll pretty much do the same thing as I go through her hair. So just watch closely. And I hope that this is a good tutorial and you're able to follow. I know a lot of people now prefer to use the flat irons. And I am uh, I am opposed to straightening hair with flat irons. I prefer the pressing comb if I'm going to straighten. And then, of course, if I chose to do a blowout, use the blow dryer. That's that's a given. Okay. So we're, we I have the tissue here or paper towels. And these were very thin paper towels. Um, something you might want to keep in mind, you want to use a, a pretty decent quality paper towel because if not, um, you have to change it quite often because it will soak up the oil. Okay, you can't see from my hand, I apologize. And she flinches because she's a little, um, she's a little intimidated by it. And usually what I do, I walk her through, walk her through as I go. I'll tell her like when I'm grabbing it up with my hands, I'll say, this is my hand, this is my hand, and I'll say, I'm putting in the comb, I'm taking out the comb, I'm putting in the comb, I'm taking out the comb. This is my hand, this is my hand, I'm putting in the comb, taking out the comb. And that kind of gives her a little bit of direction of um, calming her down and she listens to me, or they, when I do both the girls. And um, because the nap area is, um, you know, small amount of hair you can just run through with the comb and that usually straightens it without a problem just a second okay sorry about that now 
I'm going to start with my first section and I'm going to break that section um, apart. And also with press, pressing, I, I'm going to assume here um, that pressing with the hot comb takes a little bit longer than it does with the flat irons. I don't know because again, I've never um, straightened hair with uh, flat irons. But what I'm going to say is the smaller the section, the better. Um, you can get it more straighter you can kind of see it's easier on the person that you're working on uh, the other tip here is you see when you pull the hair the way you see me pulling the hair up be careful not to pull it too much because of course when you pull the hair to you you're pulling the skin and when you lay that comb in there you're bringing that skin or the scalp to ward, toward the comb and you don't want to do that. Um, the back of the comb is what presses the hair. So especially when it comes to the ends of the hair. Um, and again like I said the hotter the combs you might be able to get it straight with one pass. Um, that I'll, that um, I have not pressed hair in a it's been a little while since I've pressed, so I have to get back in the, you know, get your groove going. You know, it's like when you do that first braid, and then, you know, as you go around, the braids get better. Um, and I'm sorry if you hear additional audio. I thought that I had this muted. Um, but also with this, I wanted to let you see the progression of the whole process. So I've done just about the half of the back of her head. So here's another section and you can see it's pretty small. And I will have to clip her ends. This child here has been natural for the second time uh, for a year, over a year. I think it was sep September was her year anniversary this go round. Um, and she's 12 years of age and um, her hair has grown a lot. I did do the pretty much the big chop on her hair. I tried not to for the first maybe two, three months, but it just aggravated the mess out of me. And um, I did do the big chop on her and um, <laughs> it's a funny little story. So I'll have to tell you more about that another time. I'm trying to talk to you now to drown out my daughter talking in the background because I don't know how to get rid of that. Um, but once you put the stick the teeth into the hair, you want to turn the turn the comb so that the back of the comb is on the hair. So as the back of the hair, I mean the back of the comb is coming down the hair and coming on down to the end, this is where you press it. And then I always kind of, you know, once I do a section, I always run the comb back through the part that's already been done. And that just kind of grabs any of those ends that, that may not have gotten. It also helps to keep the hair smooth as you're going through the process. Um, it's not, it hasn't been raining and the, the air in the house is not moist. But that's also something that you want to consider when you're doing it. If there's a little bit of moisture in the house, in the house. Or uh, if there's a little, you know, I guess the same concept. If it's raining outside, there, there, that creates a little bit of um, humidity um, that will, or moisture that can uh, revert the hair. Because again, this is not what what I call a hard pressing. A hard pressing, her hair will be laying slick to her head, and I'm not doing that today. So. Um, I'm speeding this up because I, I think you've got a pretty general idea and I'm again I'm sorry for the the side conversation I really did think I had this muted um so I'm just fast forwarding and, and allowing you to watch this here and see how I turn the comb down and I'm sliding it Okay, now if you notice that one right there, the comb was pretty hot because that was pretty straight from the first go. And like I said, I will clip her ends. They've not been clipped in some time. Um, this child here, I believe I said was um, a 3C. 
was her texture. I hate to get into that because this child here, I believe, has several different textures. Her hair tightly, tightly curls, and they're they're very dense curls. Uh, where the other, her sister, her twin sister, her hair is a lot thicker, and I don't believe her hair has any curl pattern at all. Now my oldest daughter had to get in on this, so she's been tell been asking me for months to clip her ends, and I just had not gotten around to it. So I thought we'll take a little intermission. I'll go ahead and do do hers before <laughs> another day passes, because it, it's difficult sometimes for me. This is my daughter's natural hair color. I've allowed her once this year to highlight her hair because as the season changes. Uh, she noticed that her hair kind of got dark and she wanted it to look lighter. But um, looks like the most of that is gone. And she ended up doing it herself. So she she did a she did a good job for a first timer, but it was not um it wasn't distributed properly. So you are looking at her natural hair color. This is my little red child. This is my sunshine. I call her sunshine. So I'm going to clip through hers. And then I ended up, she wanted it cut kind of in a, a, a short layer style. Excuse me for my yawning. So um, we did kind of get into that. And that took up a good bit of our time. But we made it through. And I'm just going to fast forward it. And I apologize. This is our intermission. <laughs> Go get popcorn and something to drink. Restroom break. <laughs> but I have three daughters. And this is my life. So, and I have no idea right now what I'm talking about. Uh, I actually did this uh, this past weekend. Uh, the video is actually recorded on Saturday, the um, what at the six. thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Mrs. D6 on Natural. Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Mrs. D6 on Natural.